33 items that sold on eBay in January 2020. How's it going everyone? My name is Daniel aka Filipino Flips and if this is your first time checking out my channel I just want to say thank you for coming to check it out. If you like what you see I would appreciate it if you could like, comment, and subscribe because that would help me since I have zero subscribers. Alright so the first item I have is the Head Intelligence Racquetball Racket. Uh, I used to play tennis in high school and so I'm kind of familiar with uh, uh, tennis and racquetball racket brands. Uh, this one in particular um, I just looked it up uh, simply if you can see on the left side uh, you can see it's intelligence model and on the right side you can see that it's uh, the manufacturer's head and then on the bottom left it's an I-165 uh, racket um, again that's uh, the model number um, you can kind of tell of the quality uh, just based on the feel the thickness of the material um, if you see like carbon fiber of course that's going to be a little bit more expensive um, and yeah uh, at thrift stores you can kind of compare uh, compare the quality of the racquetball rackets a lot of cheaper ones like you'll see at Walmart and things like that they'll They'll be more hollow, uh, maybe just regular aluminum, things like that. Uh, for racquetball rackets, uh, one of the things, or racquetball rackets and tennis rackets, one of the things you want to make a note of, right here you can see that um, the grip size is 3 and 5 eighths inches. Uh, for different rackets, um, there are different grip sizes, and so you want to make sure to specify that for people who are going to buy it. Uh, because everyone has their own unique size. If you have a bigger hand, you're going to want a bigger grip size. And if you have a smaller hand, you're going to want a smaller one. Um, yeah, so this item sold for about $55, free shipping. Uh, for this particular one, I um, I made a, I did free shipping. I usually use uh, post office box 1095 boxes, and I'll put two together uh, to ship the uh, tennis racket. So it's pretty simple. Uh, the next item we have is the 564, uh, HP 564 XL uh, ink cartridges. This one's a combo pack uh, with both black, uh, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Um, this one sold for $30 with free shipping. Ink cartridges, they sell very well on eBay. Simply, you can just look up the, uh, the manufacturer and the model number and then see how much it's selling. The, the one thing that I wanted to note for ink cartridges on the side you can see that uh, I took a picture pretty much of all dimensions on the side um, it'll show all of the compatible printers uh, you could add that to your description if you want or even to the title um, the other thing I wanted to make a note of is the expiration date which you can see here on the bottom it's uh, April 2018 uh, I like to I like to uh, I like to sell cartridges that are probably within like two years or so since it's January 2020, it was about two years difference. Uh, as you get into the older cartridges, they may not sell as well. Uh, the next item that I sold um, was actually pretty cool. It was a dollar pickup at a yard sale, which is a vintage Homco um, porcelain figurine. This one's an eagle. Uh, this one, pretty easy to look up. On the very bottom, it was actually kind of faded. Let me see if I can find the picture for it. So it was a little bit faded when I was trying to look it up. So. Yeah, just searched up Homco Masterpiece Porcelain. Um, it doesn't have a model number, I believe, where the sticker was gone, so I actually had to uh, look it up on eBay. Uh, just looked up uh, Porcelain Eagle, and I found some uh, some comparisons, and they they sold around like fifty dollars or so. This particular one that I had, it had a broken uh, broken wingtip, uh, and I actually zoomed in and took a picture of it and disclosed it. As you can see, it is it is broken right there, so I just mentioned that. Um, but it did sell for $35 plus about $8.25 shipping. Uh, this is the first time I actually sold a uh, porcelain figurine, and so I wanted to be extra careful when I packed it. Um, the next item I sold, uh, I bought all these speakers for about $30, $30 uh, at a yard sale. Uh, as you can see, it was huge, and it actually shipped uh, through the global shipping program. So uh, $15 was the shipping that it calculated I think it was a little bit more maybe like twenty twenty five dollars but um, you know for the price I still made some money on it and it was just a learning experience as far as packing a huge a huge box I think the dimensions were they must have been about like 25 inches uh, you know like about two three feet two three feet in a in a square box um, the next item is a Columbia uh, ski jacket Columbia men's ski jacket. 
Uh, I kind of started branching out into clothing. Uh, this one I got for pretty cheap, I think around $5 or so at a, at a thrift store. Uh, but I did pick it up. I held on to it for a while. I actually used it for a little bit, even though it's a little bit larger than, than what I wear. But it was just a good quality jacket. Um, with clothing, I, it takes a little bit more work as far as just making sure that you have good pictures. Uh, for me, I have... Um, I actually hung it up and took pictures so I don't have enough space to really do flat lay. Uh, but again, I just tried to take a picture of each layer, took a picture of the tags, and and that was pretty much it. This one was a three-in-one jacket, which is actually pretty cool. Um, jackets I usually tend to pick up if I, if I look them up. I feel like they sell a little bit faster. Um, for me, it was a jacket, so it was in season in January, uh, or in the winter season, January, February, uh, and December. Um, the next item I sold is a speed sick. So I actually picked this up at a thrift store um, for I think about four or five bucks. Uh, Eight dollars is what I what I paid. So I picked that up in November and I was gone in December for vacation. Uh, this is actually a, a device that uh, baseball players use to test their their swing speed. Um, and so you can see down here it'll show the mi I believe the miles per hour. Uh, at which you swing so you, at the bottom you hold it it's about f four feet long and so yeah you you reset it you, you smack it down on the ground and then when you swing uh, there's a ball in there uh, that's probably pressurized and when you swing it'll move uh, so that again picked it up for eight bucks uh, sold it for forty which is about thirty two dollars in profit um, of course, after uh, before taxes uh, shipping was about ten dollars and this one I actually used um, the triangle shipping boxes, the, the mailing tubes from UPS. I believe I used two of those, uh, stacked them together and uh, was able to ship it out that way. Uh, so that was a quick flip. Uh, some more ink cartridges. These ones um, I also got free from my friends. Um, these ones are photo inks. Again, just looked them up, looked up the model number and uh, saw that there were comparisons around $20. So uh, I took a best offer of uh, $22 on it. I think I originally had it for $25, uh, but since it was free, again, super easy to ship. Uh, first class shipping was probably about three or four dollars. Uh, the next item I have is uh, some baseball cards, and so at a yard sale, I picked up uh, a bunch of cards. Uh, this guy he was he was a collector. I picked it up for fifty fifty dollars, and they're probably a good you know thirty thirty boxes, thirty various boxes of. Uh, baseball cards, some are FLIR. Um, I probably had about five, five or six of these, and then uh, there were some other ones, I believe they were 1990, that I had a few of as well, and I sold, uh, sold as a lot. So this was actually one that I sold individually. Uh, $36.99. Um, shipping on that was a little hefty, probably around like $10, $13. But again, you know, based off what I paid, um, I was willing to just get rid of it and uh, flip this indiv individual one. Um, again, super simple. Uh, searched up FLIR Baseball, it shows 1989. Uh, looked up the uh, the box prices, and they were about um, 35, 40 dollars shipped. Uh, the next item I had, I picked up at a yard sale for less than a dollar. Uh, sold for 15 with free shipping. Again, uh, first class shipping is probably around three, uh, three, four dollars. Uh, these items are Hot Wheels. Um, I haven't sold too many Hot Wheels, but I knew that they were relatively collectible, so again, I looked them up uh, while I was at the yard sale. So they sold for about $15 shipped, and for a dollar, you know, picked it up a quick uh, $7, $8 uh, profit right there. Uh, the next item I had, it's a uh, Shark Rocket uh, brush, uh, brush Roll Replacement Powerhead. Uh, I actually have this particular model, and um, this particular head I found at a at a yard sale. Uh, some random guy was selling it. Uh, and I picked it up for three dollars. Um, I was able to test it, clean it out, make sure that uh, make sure that it works. Uh, vacuum cleaners, buying vacuum cleaners used is kind of kind of sketchy. Um, just because you there's a risk of you know getting bed bugs and things like that. So right when I got it, you know, I did disinfect it. Uh, cleaned it out, you know, took out all the hair from the from the brush roll try to take good detailed pictures. Uh, for this one on the bottom, it actually shows the um, shows the product uh, model number, if I can find it. 
Well, maybe it does. Uh, but again, I just looked up uh, the Rocket Heads. Uh, I looked up some comparisons on eBay, and this one in particular is compatible with uh, with a few different model numbers: the 301, 302, and 305. Uh, again, nice quick flip for three dollars. Uh, sold it for forty, and shipping again about ten, eleven dollars. Not too bad. Uh, golf clubs is actually something that I uh, just got into um, earlier last year. Started playing golf and. Um, yeah, I just got to know some of the uh, good brands to keep an eye out for. Of course, there's Ping. Um, what else is there? There's Wilson. Uh, Ping, Wilson, TaylorMade. Uh, those are probably three really popular brands. Um, for golf clubs, uh, usually on the golf club head, you can see uh, see what the model is, the model number, I-20. And, um, and for these, I can make a video to kind of show how to uh, identify some of the items you want to make sure to differentiate if it's right or left-handed. Um, also the type of club, this one is an iron, so this is a single uh, five iron. So I took a picture of the five, and based off of the, the head shape and size, you know that it's an iron. Um, I also took a picture of the uh, the shaft, uh, try to get the details of that, uh, whether it's a regular or stiff flex. Uh, there's also senior flex and women's flex. Um, a lot of little nuances for golf clubs and people who play, uh, so if they want to if they're missing a club from their set, uh, those are the typically the people who will purchase an individual club from you. Um, and also for for Ping, they have uh, they have these dot uh, they have these dots um, as you can see right here. This is a black dot, um, and I believe that's for the uh, the angle of the uh, angle of the club. So the face angle of the club, uh, if it's more of an open face, the ball will fly higher or maybe impart a certain certain amount of spin on it. And so that, that was just something additional to, to make a note of. So if people have a, uh, a black dot set, they're going to want that black dot club. Uh, this one I picked up for, let's see, I picked it up for about $4. Um, golf clubs at the local thrift store that I go to, they typically sell, sell them for about 3 to $4, which is amazing if you can find you know, a bunch of them. All right, so next up we have the Disneyland annual pass holder card magnet. I got this from Disneyland from being a annual pass holder. Both my wife and I, we both go to Disneyland and we have the SoCal Select. I think it's the SoCal Select Pass. So every year they send us two of these and I was originally going to donate these but I decided to check on eBay, oddly enough, and I saw that they were selling for about $10 ship so I tossed it on and they both sold. $10 ship, not too bad. Or $10 shipped each. And I think that's one of the other items that I have later on. After that, I have a Skyrim um, Dova kit. I think that that's how you pronounce it. It's a replica helmet uh, from the video game Elder Scrolls uh, Skyrim. I received this also with some of the Loot Crate items that I got for free from my friend. Um, I just looked it up on eBay really quick. Saw it for it sold for twelve dollars. I'm around twelve dollars with free shipping, so I tossed it on there really quick uh, instead of donating it. Uh, not too bad. Again, with, with boxes and video game collectible things, I like to take a picture of, of all of the edges just to show uh, if there's any significant wear. Um, the next item that I have after that is a PlayStation 2 Guitar Hero controller. Uh, this one specifically is a wireless Kramer, uh, I guess Kramer Striker. Um, for Guitar Hero controllers, I'm not sure if I already talked about that, but this is... Um, Guitar Hero controllers, they have wired, which of course you plug in directly to the USB port um, or the controller port on the system. Uh, this one is a wireless controller and a lot of times you're going to find them at um, thrift stores or yard sales without the dongles or the either the Bluetooth or the wireless dongles. So this controller sold for $30, shipped, and I included a um, Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock game with it. Now, this is one of the first uh, this is one of the first Guitar Hero controllers that I've actually sold when I was kind of just getting into it. Um, I picked up a few Guitar Hero controllers, um, but honestly, uh, especially at the beginning, I didn't really know what to do. Um, I didn't really know what to do, how to ship them, how to pack them, and things like that. So uh, they did sit in my in my death pile for a while, but they are pretty uh, pretty simple to ship. I use uh, UPS or USPS 1095 boxes, and uh, I put two together tape them up. Uh, I can show a tutorial if you guys need of how to ship them. But again, just getting into it, shipping was probably around the $10-$15 range for these. 
um, for this uh, priority shipping. So again, just a learning experience for me. Next item I sold, another one of the guitar Guitar Hero guitars that I picked up. This one is a for the PlayStation 2. It is a Sunburst Red Octane controller. Again, did not have a dongle with it, so I uh, I sold it as is, or I sold it without the dongle, and took pictures of it. These one, uh, this one actually breaks down. So if you can see on the left side right here, on the left side of the neck, you can see that it does break down, which is a lot easier to ship. Um, the longer ones. Um, again, you can still do the 1095, put two boxes together, but it's a little bit shorter, so it's a little bit cheaper to ship. After that, I picked up some Coca-Cola, uh, their vintage uh, coasters, coasters slash ornaments, I guess. Um, yeah, I picked them up at a yard sale for, I think, two or three dollars for all of them. Uh, yeah, I just looked up on eBay, saw some, some, saw some comps, and then... Listed it for what I thought was fair, around $20 with, um, with calculated shipping, which is not too bad. After that, I picked up some Skechers shoes. These are women's shoes that I picked up at a Goodwill for $8. Uh, these are specifically the Gomeb Strata 2s. Um, I like picking up women's shoes just because they're, uh, they sell really well. I feel like they may even sell faster than, uh, than men's shoes. Uh, Skechers is a good brand. I like to specifically purchase... Um, what are they called? Uh, shape ups, sketcher shape ups. Uh, in women's, a lot of the models they sell around, I mean, like forty to sixty dollars shipped. So I've sold a few pairs of, of shape ups, and they're just good shoes. I know my mom used to; uh, she's a nurse, and so she used to buy a lot of them. Uh, she had a few pairs of, of shape ups, but they're overall good shoes. Uh, the shoes I like to take uh, pictures of all all angles of the tops and the bottoms, as well as the uh, the sole and of course the the tag as well just to verify the uh, the item number as well as the the sizes uh, the next item that I sold is an old iPod classic 6th generation uh, this one is an 80 gig um, iPod classic and this is one that I had uh, all the way back in high school um, I found it at my parents house and uh, checked eBay and saw that it was actually worth something so I I decided to go ahead and list it up it took me a little bit of time to find a uh, one of the old uh, the old iPhone cables um, around my parents' house, but I was able to charge it up. I wiped the memory, and then actually for this one, did I wipe the memory? Oh, I guess I did. Yeah, so this one I, I wiped the memory. Um, for for a lot of old older iPod stuff, iPod shuffles, uh, the original iPods, iPod classics, they they go for a pretty decent amount which is good this one's an 80 gig it is a little bit beat up um, just from from normal use it was it was probably even that beat up when i originally got it too because i kept it in the case for the most part um yeah they, they ship pretty well um, or sell pretty well again 55 dollars uh free shipping again shipping first class uh super quick flip the next item i have is uh a Super Nintendo video game. It's called Maximum Carnage. Uh, this one was complete in box, and I actually picked it up on eBay when I was looking. Um, I had sold one before, and I think I again I sold it for about a hundred dollars. So this one I found on eBay for fifty-five dollars. Buy it now. At fifty-five dollars shipped, buy it now, and I knew that I could sell it for more. Um, so for this one, I again I picked it up. It is uh, in really good condition. Um, you see it comes with the box, the manual, the game itself, which is the limited edition, limited, limited edition red cartridge. And I also used um, some tools that I have. I picked this up on Amazon for I think like $12, $13. Um, these are um, tools specifically made to open up video games. So a lot of the, um, pretty much anything, Nintendo, Xbox, uh, PlayStation, most of the tools you'll need will come in one of these sets and you can open up the cartridges uh, to verify the authenticity, make sure that it's an OEM board. Uh, this one, as you can see, uh, at the bottom bottom left right here, it's a 1990 Nintendo board. So look legit. Uh, a lot of uh, there's a lot of videos on YouTube where you can kind of compare the differences differences between a real and a fake uh, fake game. But overall, yeah, the game was in excellent condition. Again, the box was uh, in pretty decent condition. I took took a picture of some. Some of the areas where it was kind of beat up, 
think in one of these pictures it actually shows a little bit of sticker residue. Um, I think right there you can see on the, the right hand side. But again, it was one of those, one of those little oversights. Uh, I still got you know positive feedback. The buyer didn't have any issues with it. Uh, and overall, good condition. Um, if you find you know video games, especially retro video games, Super Nintendo, N64, uh, box games, they they sell you know pretty well, um, especially compared to the regular like DVD cases. Because box games, people throw them away or uh, they just get beat up because uh, people just don't want to store them or you know kids destroy things so it's just one of those things. Uh, another game that I found on eBay was uh, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, this is Budokai Tenkaichi. I think that's how you pronounce it. I found it on on eBay for $25. And I think the, the original buyer had it listed as um, listed as uh, for parts for repair or not working. Um, so I decided to take a chance on it. This was right when I was getting Starting to invest in a JFJ Easy Pro like disc repair machine. I actually have one over here that I uh, I picked up after buying this, uh, with the intent of actually you know repairing the disc. Uh, but when I got it, I, I tossed it in my PlayStation 2. Found out that it was it was working just fine. Um, so I didn't have to have to resurface it. Uh, again, it was complete in box. Came with the uh, with the box, the manual is or the the case, the manual as well as the uh, the game itself. The game was in excellent condition. And yeah, it was a an awesome, awesome profit about fifty dollars or so, fifty sixty dollars. Uh, the next game, next game, it's not even a game. It's a remote. Uh, this is a Sony remote V five hundred one C, and this one is for uh, like video, DVD, and VCR combos. Uh, extremely popular remote. Uh, I believe there's a gray one as well. Remotes are awesome to pick up. Uh, simple, simple and easy. You can usually find the item number, uh, in this case it's on the bottom, RMT-V501C, and then you can see what DVD players are compatible with. Um, as you can see in my uh, in my title, I actually listed some of the DVD players that it is compatible with, uh, just to fill up the rest of the title. Uh, this controller is sold for $12.99 plus $8.26 shipping. I'm not quite sure what happened with the shipping, I guess I probably didn't sell similar and the uh, the shipping was higher, but I'd say about twenty dollars. Twenty dollars free shipping is is about the standard that I've sold uh, similar remotes. Uh, after that, again, this is the second annual pass holder that I sold. Ten dollars shipped, uh, so about you know six dollar profit. Not too bad. Uh, these next items, it was a little bit of a mistake on my part when I sold them. I put free shipping, uh, so these sold for fifteen dollars with free shipping. Uh, definitely a learning mistake because. Uh, the cost to ship these items was about 13 13 or 14 dollars so i pretty much just straight up lost money uh, along with the the uh the coca-cola coca-cola coasters i picked these these up as well and again 50 50 cents to a dollar um, i picked all these up i um in hindsight i should have just left them um, because they they weren't really you know worth anything individually so that's why i tried to lock them up um, and in addition to the learning experience, I actually, um, I actually had these, had one of the glasses break, the one in the middle, it actually broke, uh, it broke, and the, the buyer notified me, and they, uh, they let me know, so I just offered them, you know, pretty much as a $7.50, $7.50, um, refund back for that broken glass. They accepted it happily, you know, they were pretty understanding, and, uh, for me, I was just, uh, again, just a working experience, a working experience, a learning experience, and um, I remember packing it. I was, I was thinking like there is a chance that that it could break. Uh, I did use bubble wrap on all of the cups, but the box was a little bit smaller, um, so I can definitely understand if it was thrown around or something like that. That um, one of the glasses did break. All right, so the next item I have is a Wilson Staff FG Tour V4 forged uh, four iron. And this is a right hand iron and it's the head only of the golf club. Um, so golf club typically consists of the, the head of the club, the shaft, and then the grip. Um, so this this was actually I found in one of the golf club bags that I bought at a thrift store for two or three dollars. Um, I didn't check the pocket, oddly enough I didn't see it in one of the pockets and uh, when I got home I was like oh sweet. Um, so this, uh, this sold for $29.99. I mean, it's pretty much a, a freebie, so the cost was, was you know, pennies on the dollar, and uh, it shipped for seven dollars and fifty cents. Um, 
with calculated shipping. Uh, for golf clubs, uh, golf clubs in general, I like to try to take a nice, nice picture. Um, it's kind of hard to get all of the details in specifically. Uh, luckily, this one actually has V4, so it shows that it's a four iron, I believe. But as you can see here on the top, there's the four, and sometimes it's hard to get uh, the face of it as well as the um, the size of the iron. The next item that I sold is a Gemini CD uh, by Macklemore. Uh, this item I picked up for a dollar at a thrift store. Um, it was kind of one of those things. Like I, I guess it was just, it was a it was, it was an okay purchase uh, just because it was a dollar. And of course, uh, first class shipping about four dollars. So I made a few bucks on it, but uh, this thing sat for a good few months, and so yeah. I'll, I'll kind of stray away from CDs. I mean, even though it was new, uh, I'll be a little more picky with uh, with media. Uh, the next thing that I sold is a Cold Fear Microsoft Xbox game. This is an original Xbox game that I picked up at a local thrift store, uh, literally just just down the street from my house. And this sold for uh, for nineteen ninety nine, and I picked it up for two dollars. Let me see if I can find. Yeah, picked up or picked it up and sold it for two dollars. I picked it up on the 12th of January and when did this sell? It sold on the 22nd, so sold in, in 10 days. Uh, kind of the same thing, Try to, if it's complete in box, try to pick, take a picture of the box manual as well as the disc. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, the next item is a Pokemon Sword um, and a little story about this, I picked it up from a GameStop that was closing uh, near where I work, and if you don't know already, GameStop announced that it was closing about, I think, 200 stores um, within the U.S., so uh, when I heard that, I quickly looked up on online to see what stores were closing, and I found a store that was closing near where I live. Uh, there was only one store, um, I guess within about 50 miles from where I live, and so I um, I went there after work, and I went there after work one day, uh, went to the store, it was for the most part cleaned out and there was actually just one copy of uh, Pokemon Sword on display uh, and so I, I I grabbed it went up to the guy you know I ended up purchasing it uh, along with another Pokemon game I think uh, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and then uh, as I was walking out I was like hmm I, I I took a moment and then I walked back into the store and I asked him hey do you do you have any more uh, any more Pokemon Sword copies um, and also Let's Go Eevee copies and so I, uh, he, he looked inside and he actually had like 15, 15 in stock. And so I, I bought everything. Um, and, uh, at that GameStop, it was probably two or three days before it was closing for good. And so the sale was 60% off, I believe. And so I got them for, uh, $25. Let me see if I can find my calculator. Yeah. So 60 times 0.4. Yeah. So $24. Um, at 60% off. So I bought them for $24 each and I uh, sold them for about 50 uh, with free shipping. Again, first class shipping is about uh, 3 to $4, so so that's not bad, you know, good $15, $20, uh, $20 flip for each one and they all sold pretty much over the weekend uh, once I listed them. All right, the next item, another game that I got from the thrift store by my house, Silent Hill 2 for the Xbox. Uh, the original Xbox, uh, this one sold for $22.99, it was complete in box, and yeah, again, super quick flip, probably sold within a week or two um, from listing it. Uh, next item is a PlayStation, this is original PlayStation uh, PS1 bag, uh, like a little shoulder bag. This one I picked up at a different thrift store for $3. Uh, I saw it, again, I knew it was retro, classic PlayStation sign, uh, and I wasn't sure if I was going to you know, kind of keep it for to build my collection or just uh, resell it. Um, so this particular thing, I just decided to, to go ahead and sell it. Uh, sold for $25 plus shipping. So not too bad, just had to clean it up a little bit. But again, easy flip. Uh, the next thing I sold, a head liquid metal uh, racquetball racket. Uh, well, like I mentioned before, I mentioned the grip. Tried to take good pictures of it. Uh, looked at the... Uh, the build of it, uh, just noticed it was nice and clean, no no cracks, uh, very few paint chips, if any. And uh, one thing I did do with this racket, and I think the the other one that I 
uh, I mentioned I did put a new overgrip over the grip. Um, the grips tend to deteriorate over time and so um, if you see it peeling you can either replace it with a completely new grip which is like super thick or you can just put an overgrip around it and so that's what I opted to do in this in this situation. Uh, you can get you can get them at Walmart like three three overgrips for about four or five dollars. Uh, the next item another pair of women's shoes this is Sanook I believe that's how you pronounce it it was pretty much new uh, $24.99 and I bought them for I believe seven eight dollars so not too bad. Uh, this this item is a lot of 30 Nintendo 64 games. I picked these up um, from a local seller. I think it was either Facebook or OfferUp. And he originally had just all the games for sale. And he was asking, I think taking offers, taking offers on the whole thing. So I threw out an offer of about uh, $200. Um, I actually... Uh, pulled up an Excel sheet, listed out all the games, and then uh, saw what their prices were on eBay, kind of what the profit was on eBay, and I, I saw that I could I could make, you know, probably sell it for about $300 or more, um, and make, you know, about $100 profit or so. So I went ahead, uh, met up with him, picked it up, and uh, went ahead and just took some more pictures, or, you know, cleaned them up, took some pictures, tested them, and then uh, relisted them for $325. And I was excited that someone actually, uh, someone actually bought it for, for my asking price. Uh, some of these games, you can see, I actually ordered them in in order of, from top left to right, uh, in order of cost. Uh, Rocket, uh, Rocket's a pretty expensive game. I think it goes for about fifty dollars by itself, uh, in mint condition or in good condition. Earthworm Jim, I think, is about twenty, twenty thirty dollars. Uh, Kirby's another good game, about mid twenty dollar range. Uh, Pretty much any Mario Mario game uh, is also in that uh, you know mid twenty dollar range. So I got Mar three copies of Mario Tennis, Mario Golf, um, just a few other classic games. Uh, Mischief Makers is a good one. Star Fox sixty four is a really good really good game, even though it has a beat up label. Um, I'm not sure if this guy was you know building his collection or trying to resell, but I think for the most part, yeah, you know, like I I definitely profited off that one. Uh, the next item are some uh, 511 tactical women's uh, women's boots uh, I picked these up for $15 at a Goodwill uh, at a local Goodwill uh, I know 511 is a really good outdoor um, like an outdoor active uh, active brand so a lot of um, uh, people in the military armed forces um, as well as just people who like to to be outdoors uh, they they use a lot of this gear the pants uh, the pants, and they also make, I think, a lot of um, tactical gear as well. But these these boots were in excellent condition, and I'm uh, just happy to pick them up. You know, barely had to clean it, uh, uh, clean them off. You know, they were very lightly used, and of course, you know, just taking pictures all around, and then taking a nice detailed picture of the tag. Uh, yeah, sold it for forty nine ninety nine with fifteen uh, fifteen dollar you know purchase price. That's not too bad. And the last item that I sold uh, on eBay for January of 2020 was um, some HP 564XL cartridges. Um, I also got these from uh, from a family friend. They they just had a bunch of extra cartridges. And again, I took a just nice detailed picture. I uh, saw what the comps were. It sold for a little less than what what I wanted, but uh, at that point I was just trying to get rid of them and clear up some space. So I took an offer on uh, 1499 for them. And uh, you know, free first class shipping, and got it, got it out right away. So that was 33 items sold in January of 2020. I hope you guys learned something, and if you like what you saw, I would really appreciate it if you could like, comment, and of course subscribe. That way, I can grow my channel. I hope to see you guys around. Stay cool and be blessed. In today's video, I'm going to show you 23 items, plus 10, which is actually 33 items, that sold in January 2020. <laughs>